Hey everybody out there, this is Seto, and today for you guys, we are going to be doing a deck profile update of my Evil Swarm deck. Now, this is a deck that I've actually wanted to reprofile um, ever since Master Rule 5 came out, actually. Um, the reason for that is, with Master Rule 5, to some extent, Evil Swarms, especially the way the old school Evil Swarm decks are played with Ophion, are a little bit more viable, quote unquote. I say it lightly because, you know, of Evil Swarm Ophion's effect. But just generally, overall, it being a very good rank 4 toolbox dot deck that has floodgates and can easily run floodgates is another reason I really wanted to play around with the deck. And test things out. So, it's a fun deck. It's a it's it's completely completely probably like rogue or even just fun local deck that can randomly top depending upon the meta. But it's still a fun deck. And you know, hey, it used to hate take down dragon rulers and high priestess of prophecy back in the day, back to in 2013 format. I can't believe how long ago that was. But yeah. So first off, we're running three Evil Swarm Kirkleon. Kirkleon does so much for you. It's a staple three of. This came out of, initially, it came out of Lord of the Tekion Galaxy. Um, but it's definitely a staple three of in the deck. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the Evil Swarm monsters. Um, I feel like the ratios are pretty straightforward for the most part. And anybody that's played Evil Swarms before pretty much knows what they do. So I'm going to go over these pretty quickly. So we have three Kirkleons, staple three of. Uh, Caster is kind of like your Marauding Captain type of card, where you can bring out another Evil Swarm with it in some regards, as long as it doesn't get negated. Uh, but yeah, he's another good thing. The thing this deck does is, even if you're not going for Ophion, it can make very good, pretty much, rank 4 toolbox monster plays. And the rank 4 extra deck is... Not as good as it used to be or as powerful, but it's still decent and very, very good, I find. So, don't discount it. But, uh, three Caster. Uh, we also run three Mandragora. Uh, Mandragora, you may have played around in some plant-based decks just for fun. Uh, but it's a staple in Evil Swarm decks as a three of. Kind of consider this, I don't want to say it's like a tin plate goldfish, but... In a way, it kind of is, um, you know, a card you can bring out depending upon the number of monsters on the field. So, that's uh, Mandragora. Next, we run two Thunderbird. Thunderbird's pretty straightforward as well. Uh, the fact This guy, I like it as a 2 of instead of a 3 of. Some people still like Thunderbird as a 3 of. That's perfectly fine. That's up to you if you want to run Evil Swarm Thunderbird as a, as a 3 of. Um, but me, personally, a 2 of works fine. It's just, a, its effect is good. It used to be really cool. There were some janky plays you could used to do with its banishing effect. But it's still a good of, 2 of, I find, even nowadays. For recycling stuff. So next up, we run 3 Heliotrope. Heliotrope is, well, he's going to be you're probably the main thing you're going to use with Rescue Rabbit to help go for Evil Swarm Ophion or anything, really. So that's the good thing. The fact that we can also recycle him. So even though you have your three rescue rabbits in your deck, which is going to help you, you know, you draw one as long as you don't draw one of the, you know, two of these in your opening hand, you can go for, you know, a uh, rank four exceed played using res uh, rescue rabbit. But you can also recycle Evil Swarm Heliotrope. Uh, cool fact, um, apparently, I, I may be incorrect in me stating this, but I think it's spelt backwards. The lettering for its flavor text, which is one of those like flavor tech monsters that I've always liked. Worst case scenario, you can use them as a 19,000, uh, 1,950 attack beat stick. Uh, but most of the time, you're going to be using him for rank 4 exceed plays. And you can recycle him, which is really nice. Uh, we'll talk about how you can recycle him later on, because you may be wondering that. But 3, Rescue Rabbit. Um, and this is going to bring up the point of what I was talking about, how you're going to use Rescue Rabbit. You're going to use it with Evil Swarm Heliotrope. Now, you just heard me saying, okay, you can recycle it. How can you recycle Heliotrope so that your other Rescue Rabbits are not dead? H how are you going to do this? Um, well, if you're familiar with Evil Swarms at all, you know you could actually use it with a searchable card that you can search off Ophion called Infestation Infection. Now, this is a little bit slow being a trap card, but it does help recycle 
your heliotropes so you can make your rescue rabbits more alive and in addition to that you can also use any, some other cards that will make them not be dead um, so yeah it's really a nice card to have in the deck and it works well to help recycle your rescue rabbits because one thing i love about rescue rabbit i don't like running it as a three of per se is for the fact that especially if you're just running one set of vanillas um it can become dead not fun infestation infection helps me recycle it so i can make maybe a second rescue rabbit live or a third rescue rabbit live so really like that card for that reason that's why we're running three rescue rabbit i like hand traps especially in evil swarm uh, due to the fact that you have to watch out for monster effects to some degree so we're running three effect failure and three ash blossom and joyous springs so yeah why are we running these ratios of hand traps now you can run any hand traps you want you want to run that dd crow you run that dd crow you want to run that ghost ogre you run that ghost ogre you want to run winter cherries um because you don't want to run into dragoon of the red and you just want to get rid of it and banish it <laughs> be my guest um you can run whatever hand traps you want to but the reason i'm running these in particular is ash blossom is going to hit a lot of decks and slow them down. Effect Veiler, this deck doesn't really have a lot of effect negation and it can become its Achilles heel. So for that reason, Effect Veiler stops that. So that's why I like Effect Veiler. Now there are some cool things because your, your deck is a majority dark where you could run maybe a BLS in your main deck, you know, just because you run some lights and darks. That is a thing I have seen a buddy of mine as I was playtesting try out and he liked it. He top deck a BLS and it won him a game. So just saying, guys, like there's different ways you can take this deck. So three Ash Blossom, three Effect Failure. Next we're running two Infestation in Pandemic. Um, some people like this card as a one of. Some people like it as a two of. Uh, from play testing, I do like it as a two of. Um, I understand if you're running it as a one of because it's not as good as it used to be. I, I understand that completely. I wish it said protects it from effects. <laughs> but nevertheless, I still like it as a two of in the deck, and it's been working pretty well. So two infestation pandemic. Uh, next, we run three alert darkness. You're a dark based deck. I mean, a majority of your deck, guys. I mean, do we have to go back over here and look like darks, 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 darks. Okay, what, earth? then fire and light <laughs> for your hand traps. So a majority of your main deck monsters are going to be dark. And you want a good consistent draw engine. One thing I've always found out with the Evil Swarm deck is that sometimes you'll draw multiple of Evil Swarms and you're like, I don't need multiple of this card right now. Okay, well I can banish it, draw two cards, and then maybe I can draw into some floodgates, some hand traps, something that you know I can do to help protect my Evil Swarm Ophion or to slow down my opponent's plays as this is, for the most part, a going first deck, um, depending upon, you know, knowing your opponent's deck and what their matchup is. But, for the most part, it's going to be always be going a going first deck. And for that reason, you want to get to your hand traps and your floodgates as quickly as possible. So, Allure of Darkness helps out with that, I find. And next, we run One Unexpected Die. Now, this is probably the other card I run to work with Evil Swarm Heliotrope, as we were talking about earlier. Now, you may think to yourself, oh, you know, you're running Rescue Rabbit and this. Why are you running this? Well, it's because I've had this happen a lot where I draw instances of this and Rescue Rabbit, and you don't draw any Heliotropes, which it will happen a lot often. So what you could do is you can bring out a rank four and then you can bring this out later to help go for another rank four play you're getting that dead vanilla out of your deck right off the get-go so it's nice in that aspect now it's something like i said i like to run it's really cool uh there's certain things where you'll use infestation pandemic and you're gonna be like oh okay i just added one back i'm gonna bring it back out with unexpected die uh, and then help go for a rank four play that way so it's some cool little plays you can do actually just as a one of um, so I like it in the deck as a one of. It's worked out well. You can cut it for something else you want to, but me personally, it's just nice to, in the deck because of the usage and the mileage you can get out of the vanillas in certain aspects. Next, we run one double or nothing. This is going to help OTK your opponent with Utopia double staple one of. 
Uh, Upstart Goblin is going to add, make it a 39 card deck and add a little bit extra draw power. Why not? Reinforcement of the army is going to help search out your caster, which will help you go for good plays. So you're making your deck thin and pretty much it's going to help you out in the long run. And then we got Monster Reborn because it's Monster Reborn. And why not bring back dead cards so you can go for more rank 4 plays, do more different things, maybe steal an opponent's big monster. It's freaking Monster Reborn. And you may ask yourself, where is Harpy's Feather Duster? I decided not to run it. Because it's better in the side deck I found. Just me. <laughs> uh, infestation Pandemic. Why are we running this card? We just talked about this. Now the cool thing is this is searchable through Evil Swarm Ophion. So you don't always, always have to search your Infestation Pandemic. You can also search your Infestation Infection over here, your trap card. And then you can help re recycle your Heliotropes. And there will be instances if I know their deck doesn't run a lot of, you know, monster removal in the form of spell and trap that I'll actually just search this off first turn going off Eel Swarm Ophion if I maybe went for a rescue rabbit play. That way I can already set up to recycle my heliotropes. You get where I'm going with this. So a good one of in the deck I find. Next we have three infinite impermanence. I do not like monster effects. I do not want you to have monster effects. I want you not to do anything. So this is going to help you in addition with everything else to slow your opponent down, to stop their monster effects from kicking off, and things of that nature. So three of that. And then lastly, let's talk about my tech option. There can only be one monster on the field. No, I'm joking. Uh, no, there only can be one. Yes, I like saying there can only be one Highlander. There can only be one Evil Swarm Ophion. No, I'm joking. But technically, technically that is true when you have the only can be one on the field. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, but yes, three, there can only be one. Now, I like this card because it's a very generic floodgate to some degree. There are other cards you can put that I just would, if I had a side deck built, I found from playtesting online, worked better in the side deck. So your Eradicator Epidemic Virus. Um, that's a great card, but it's only as good as its matchup, right? Um, maybe if I was taking this deck to a, I don't know, a Regionals World YCS, and I was afraid of Tactical Talents and Lightning Storm, maybe I would be more inclined, because of those powerful spell cards, to run it in the main deck. That is a thing. Also, for the fact that sometimes I do find myself having a little teeny bit of trouble maybe getting it off. Not a lot. Not a lot, mind you, but it does happen. So I decide that it's a better side deck card. Harpy's Feather Duster is a good side deck card. This, this deck, ha you know, you can run things like Macrocosmos and Defissure in your extra, you know, your side deck, like Macro and Defissure, because they're good cards, but I find them only as good as the matchup. So for that reason, I like them in the side deck compared to their only can be one, which I found from playtesting hits a more broader majority of decks. And that may you know differentiate format to format, just to let you know. So let us get on to the extra deck, but uh, hopefully that, under that explains the main deck thoroughly. Um, I know I didn't want I wanted to go more in detail with tech options than the main monsters. So Extra deck, we run three Evil Swarm Ophion. I still like running three of, some people like two of. That's fine, that's up to you. It's cool. Um, one Evil Swarm Buhamut, pretty good card. And the one honorary Evil Swarm card, Exiton Knight, because he is technically an Evil Swarm Exiton Knight. So, those are pretty much your Evil Swarm monsters that you're gonna run in your main deck, guys. Uh, for that, but let's get on to your other rank fours that we're going to be running. Number 41, Baga Sucha, uh, the Sleeping Tapir. Uh, number Tornado Dragon, good for back row removal. Castell, it's versatile, I still find even today. Abyss Dweller, it's de good depending upon its matchup. Utopia, number 39, Utopia Double, this is going to help you OTK with Double and Utopia. Uh, Evil Swarm 
the Evil Swarm Link monster, which I never can pronounce upside when I'm reading it upside down. I'm sorry. But the Evil Swarm Link monster. Nightmare Cerberus, Nightmare Phoenix, and Nightmare Unicorn. That's all for your link plays. There are other some other links you can run, but I just wanted a good generic, pretty much nightmare package, and then the Evil Swarm Link Monster, which is good, but I I prefer it as a one of compared to maybe a possible two of, because I want to run the full extent of the of the nightmare package just in case of things happening. Because you 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 can go for these ones easily, and Unicorn you can go for if you need to. So that's why I'm running this. Um, hope you guys all enjoy the deck profile. Overall, I really, really enjoy the deck. It's a super fun deck to play, guys. It's Evil Swarm. It's old school. It took down Dragon Rulers, in a way, back in the day. Um, so, I've always liked this deck. Um, I built it a couple of years ago, actually, for fun. And it's just so cool because, you know, it's one of those anti-meta decks that is really good depending upon the format and that you can really tech out with good side deck techs and actually make it good. Plus the fact that I love rank 4 toolbox, and this deck, even without Ophion, is a pretty good rank 4 toolbox deck. So I love those rank 4 toolbox based decks. So, till next time guys, take care, have fun dueling, good luck dueling to all of you. If you like this video, remember to give it a big thumbs up, and remember to subscribe the to the channel guys. And next time... Till next time, guys, take care, have fun dueling, good luck dueling to all of you, and I shall see you all next time.